Welcome back. The next code editor we're going to look at is a very, very popular one. It's completely free. So I think right now it's probably the most popular code editor out there in the community. And I think you'll see why. We can download it based on your machine. So you can pick whatever computer you have. In my case, we'll download it for Mac. And it has a really, really good get started guide. Again, all these tools have a lot of information online for them. So again, if you get stuck with downloads, there's always way for you to figure out how to solve these. Now, keep in mind with code editors, it doesn't just mean these are for Python. Both Sublime Text and Visual Studio Code can write any sort of language, programming language that you want. Like myself, I usually like writing JavaScript as well. So I can go back and forth between different languages, but still use the same tools. So let's open up VS Code. We're going to install this. And again, on Windows, it'll be very similar. You'll go through an installer. In my case, I'll add it to my applications. In my case, it should appear somewhere around here. Click on that. And there you go. We have Visual Studio Code. There's a lot more going on than Sublime Text. It's why I actually prefer Sublime Text. There's just less things happening on the screen. But you can see over here that it has some really nice features. For example, we can create a new file here. And we can just create, let's say, a Python file. So I'm going to Command S and Save and just call it hello.py because we want to create a Python file. You'll see right away when I do that, it's going to tell me, hey, there's no Python interpreter selected. You need to select a Python interpreter. And luckily, we actually learned what that means, right? So let's select a Python interpreter. And look at that. It tells me that I have a choice because we've downloaded version 3.7. But on my Mac, I also have the pre-installed 2.7. So luckily, Visual Studio Code tells me, hey, which one do you want to use? And I'm going to say, I want to use Python 3. There you go. And I get another hint. It says, hey, we also have a linter available for Python. Do you want to install that extension as well? We'll get to that in a bit. But for now, let's focus on this. If I do print hello, getting really creative with my code here, you see that Again, I have syntax highlighting. Everything looks good. If I miss a bracket, what happens? Do I get any errors? What if I just write some gibberish here? Hmm. I'm not getting anything because, well, I don't have this PyLint installed. But again, we'll get to linting in a bit. The cool thing about Visual Studio Code is that you also have the terminal right here. You can actually, if this isn't open for you, you can just click Terminal and just say New Terminal. Now, in here, I'm going to close this for now. I can run my Python code. And let's make sure it's just a print. I can say Python hello.py. If I click Run, oh, I didn't save this, so make sure I save it so it's the new version. And run this again, python hello.py. Now look at that, it's all working. Now, up to this point, we have this print hello. We also know that we're running Python version 3.7. You can see here, if I click on here, I can select what interpreter I want to use. And it also gives us a few tips, such as, hey, linter pylint is not installed. So let's install pylint. Pylint is a linter. That is, it's almost as a spell checker for our code, letting us know, is this syntax right? And there are many versions of linters available for Python. Pylint just happens to be one of the most popular. And VS Code, by default, suggests pylint. So let's install that. Once that's installed, you see over here that everything is going through. And now let's see if this works. So let's save this file. I'm going to say File, Save. 
And if I click on problems here, hmm, there are no problems detected so far, but we know that the print should have brackets around it. So what we want to do here is go to view, command palette, and we see right away that it says Python enabled linting. If I type Python here, the Python installer that we had at the beginning when we installed VS Code installed a whole bunch of shortcuts and tools for us to use, such as enable linting. So let's click on that, and I'm going to say on. If I save, look at that. In my problems, it says missing parentheses in call to print. Did you mean, did you mean print hello? I also get this little underline, and it tells me exactly a, what print does, but also tell me what errors I need to fix. And you see that it's a pylint syntax error. So again, I can just fix that nice and easy. Now, if I save, there's no problems. Everything is running fine. If I go to my terminal and do python hello.py, look at that. Everything is working nicely. So this problems panel is really nice for your code to be told, hey, something's wrong. For example, if I miss a bracket here and I save, the problems is going to tell me, hey, hey, there's something going on. There's a syntax error. And PyLint is helping me solve that issue. By the way, you might be asking yourself, um, how come my editor, VS Code, doesn't look like this? For example, if I go to extensions, I have the Dracula official theme enabled now, which is a color theme that I have for Visual Studio Code. And let's uh, click on this over here and just, and just say disable all installed extensions. You'll see that I just have a few extensions that allow my Visual Studio Code to be customized. But in your case, if you're just installing Visual Studio Code, it'll look something like this. But by installing the Python package with the PyLint, we now have a fully abled IDE, in a sense, for us to write Python code. I'll see you in the next one.